Your name is not 
is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a life forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name
knees, stepping into our line of vision so that all the things that come against us in life, all the, all the, the thoughts of fear, all the, all the anger, all the, all the annoyances, all, all this and that, the stuff that we let get so big, he's stepping in front of that right now. And he's saying, nope, keep your eyes on me. I'm bigger than all of it. I'm greater than all of that stuff. Because it's his kingdom. It's his glory. He should have our heart. He should have our thoughts. Our vision should be on him only. It's his glory. It's his honor. It's his power. He's bigger than all of it. So I want to sing that again. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the power forever. Amen. Sing it with me. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. Amen. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Jesus, you're beautiful. 
your hands if you recognize the presence of the Lord right now. Come on, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Just raise your hands if you want to recognize the presence of the Lord right now. <laughs> God, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. in this place, we just choose to change our thinking, God. In this space, God, we choose right now just to, to, to re-up, God. To re-up, God. To a higher place in you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're so good, Jesus. You're so good, God.
I feel the Lord just present to heal this morning. If you have sickness in your body, just check it out today throughout our time. I feel like the Lord is just releasing healing right now in your body without anyone laying hands. It's okay. If you want it, just raise your hands. If there's something going on, just raise your hands just right now. Just that act of faith, just take it right now. If there's something going on that you need healing from, just go ahead and just take it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you that today is the day that you've made, God. I just thank you, Jesus, that today is the day that you are authoring, you are crafting, God. So we just enter into that place today with you, God. Hmm. I just thank you, God, that heaven has nothing but good news to release. Heaven has nothing but breakthrough to release, God. Heaven has nothing but hope and healing to release and redemption to release. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, yesterday I was at a wedding. Just, just stay in that posture of worship just for a moment. Yesterday I was at a wedding, and uh, during the wedding, um, during the wedding, the, the gospel was shared that Jesus paid for all of our sins, and he's available for a relationship, and that he's for us, and then he's not against us, and he was raised from the dead, and, and he lives to live in us. And someone got saved at that wedding. Come on, Jesus. You know... I think, I, think it's, I think it's a powerful picture that when the bride and groom come together, people get saved. Come on, Jesus. A anybody with me? Come on, Jesus. When the bride and groom get together, people get saved, people get touched, people encounter the Lord. That there was a moment of rethinking his thinking and he said yes to Jesus. Well, I have some good news for you. You guys wanna hear some good news? It says this, that in Genesis 28, there's a story of Jacob, and he fell asleep like any ordinary day, and he laid his head on a rock, and then he had a dream, and in the dream, he saw a stairway, a ladder that was going up to reaching to the tops of heaven, and he saw angels ascending and descending on that stairway. He saw the Word of God and the presence of God going up and down, up and down, right upon him. And it says this, it says, at the top of it, there above it stood the Lord. He said, I am the Lord and I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. How many of you know, as a believer, there is an open heaven over your life that looks like the presence and the Word of God coming and establishing, coming and establishing, coming and establishing. That as a believer, there is an open heaven over your life. And so what I want to do is we're just going to pray for a few things. You guys good? Let, let's just get together right now. Just go ahead in groups of two, three people and just be in agreement. We're going to pray over some things because we need more of heaven on earth. I said, we need more of heaven on earth. It's actually available. And right now, we're going to change where we're thinking, and we're going to take access to that place and begin to pray. So everyone in the room, if you're sitting, stand up. 
If you're sitting, stand up right now and, and stretch your legs, do whatever you need to do. Go and gather in groups of two or three. And I want you to actually recognize, become aware of something that you're under in open heaven as you pray. That Jesus, it says that the, that the veil was torn and that there was an open heaven over Jesus and he gave you that as your inheritance. So there's actually an open heaven over your life as we pray right now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pray right now for if you're in this room and you have sickness or disease, you don't even have to talk to someone right now in groups of two or three. Just go ahead and release the breakthrough of the Lord over them. Everyone in this room right now, in Jesus' name, we just release the breakthrough healing power of the Lord in this room right now. Whether you need it or not, someone in this room does. So Father, we thank you right now. We thank you right now for releasing your presence, God, in a greater measure in this place, in this house this morning, God. We thank you for the breakthroughs that are coming, the breakthroughs that are manifesting. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you accomplished at the cross. We thank you, Lord. We just release it now this morning. We release it now this morning. We release it now this morning, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We have a friend of the house, a dear friend of our house, Kara Lee, and she needs breakthrough. So everyone in the room, go ahead and just pray by name for Kara Lee, that she needs healing in her body. Kara Lee, we release the healing of the Lord over you. We release the healing word of the Lord over you right now, Kara Lee, in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for, for her, the banner over her is love. So Father, we thank you, Lord. And we just say every cancerous cell, bow to the name of Jesus. We say every rebellious cancerous cell bow to the name of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you for visiting her right now in this space. And Lord, we thank you that for Memorial Day weekend, God. We just thank you for military families in our region, in our area, God, in this church, God. And right now, Lord, we just pray, Lord, let your presence just come. Lord, let your presence just manifest, God. Lord, would you just, would you just right now just meet with every military family, God, that, that is living that lifestyle, Lord. Families that have lost someone, God, and families that are currently living in military. Lord, we thank you that they paid a price for our freedom, that they daily pay a price for our freedom. And right now, Lord, we just say connection with those that are out in the field right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, let there be such a divine and holy connection over their lives that they get supernatural strategies, God, that they're able to pastor their their, their fellow uh, military service men and women, God, that they're able to know, God, and, 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 and undo the works of the enemy, God. And we just thank you, Lord, for releasing safety over them, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the men and women of our military, God. Thank you, Lord. God, we just say supernatural courage and supernatural protection. Thank you for that they will walk in victory every place that they go, God. Thank you, Jesus. Now just put your hand on your heart. God, we thank you that, that you call us to walk in victory in every place that we go, God. And right now, we just walk into that and receive it afresh today, God. We just break depression in Jesus' name. We break discouragement in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to walk in victory. And right now, Lord, we thank you for just releasing a greater measure of that, God, in our lives. In our lives, Lord, in Jesus' name. We'll give someone a big hug around you. If you see someone you don't know, go ahead and say hi to them. Good morning. Welcome to Zion. And as you get back to your seats, if you're new here to Zion, could you please raise your hand in the air? Hi. And uh, we've got our ushers coming around with, uh, with gift bags. If you could keep your hand in the air until that gets to you. Awesome. And uh, in the back of every seat and also in your gift bag, there's going to be this blue and white card that says Get Connected. 
If you fill that out and turn that into the offering buckets when, then go, when those go around, we'll be able to get in touch with you, invite you to our next newcomer's dessert. So uh, yeah, if you wanna get connected here, that's first contact point. June 2nd, next Sunday, directly after service. Do you remember when we had all those food trucks come out like a while ago, hung out on the lawn, lawn games, stuff like that? We're doing that again. So next Sunday, just right after service, we're gonna have those fun fellowship time. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, June 9th is our pancake fundraiser. So from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., so the hour preceding service, uh, in Kid Nation, they're gonna be selling pancakes uh, to raise money for an outreach they're doing in August. Um, from what I understand, that's, it's meant to kind of equip kids in downtown Columbus uh, with like supplies, um, funding them. I don't know exactly what they're doing, um, but yeah, I asked Josh kind of about the vision of it and he, he quoted, um, the light that shines the farthest shines the brightest at home. Uh, and so we're wanting to kind of touch our home in Columbus with that outreach. So the Sunday, June 9th, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., selling pancakes, it's gonna be a great time. Uh, and then June 28th at Zion Pickerington, uh, we're going to have James Maloney up here, 28th through the 30th. So it's going to be a healing and impartation weekend at Pickerington with the James Maloney. So very powerful man, gonna be awesome. And uh, with that, let's get into offering declarations. Yes? Cool. You get the, awesome. Those are the ways to give. Um, cash and check, checks are payable to Zion. You can text to give, you can give online. We also have an app or application as some call them. And then on to the declarations. Awesome. All right, you guys ready? Cool. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for resources for new businesses, from answers to city problems, city transformation, supernatural courage to slay giants, evangelism eruptions, positions and promotions, multiple streams of income, land buildings, houses, and vineyards, irresistible influence, great inventions, glory explosions in our workplaces, groundbreaking ideas, surprising encounters, angelic assistance, to boldly go and bring up on the calm before us. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us in a way to be known on earth with his saving power among all nations. Praise the Lord. All right, and everyone, welcome the earth shaker. Ground taker, Pastor Mary Baker. <laughs> Can I have this? Maybe. Hello, hello. How are you? Are you guys ready today? I got my glory boots on. Guess what we're talking about? Glory. Glory. Hey, uh, I'm going to ask Eddie Reardon to come up, my friend. We like to activate people. So Eddie is going to release a word over you today, or two, or three. Who knows what's going to come up? There we go. <clears throat> Wait, hold on. I think I just turned it off. Sorry, my bad. We like to test the activations. Um, so when Mary asked me to just pray into a word, I immediately had this word drop in my spirit for Zion. Um, I got a lot of notes, so, but I'll try to get through it quickly. Um, I heard that there's an invitation to build, and that if you are part of this house at Zion, that you are a builder, and that the Lord's actually going to be drawing even more builders to Zion. Um, and then I kept hearing in, in Josh Lawrence's voice, so you can do this with me, in my <laughs> head, I kept hearing the time is coming, and now is. The time is coming, and now is. The time is coming, and now is. I heard it three times very distinctly um and i just felt like because the normandy project was actually birthed out of a dream 
and then brought to fruition in this house. It wasn't some project that we took over that somebody else had previously worked on, but it was something that we dreamed up and brought it to fruition, that that actually ushers in breakthrough for the rest of us and our dreams and our visions and the businesses that the Lord has put on our heart. Um, and then there's an invitation for those of us who have dreams, businesses, nations, and action on our hearts. And the Lord is calling us to take a step, or a, a step of faith towards those dreams. And so he reminded me of the verse where it says, um, faith without works is dead. And so what the Lord is looking for is an opportunity for him to put his super on your natural. Um, so if you have any business on your heart, um, I heard the Lord say, literally do anything uh, towards that dream. Start by writing a business plan, buy a web domain, set up an email. If you have a nation on your heart, go home after service today and pack a go bag because you need to be ready to go. And so that's, that's awesome. the Lord putting his super on your natural. And I heard him say that when you step out in faith, that you're actually giving room for the Lord. Uh, you're actually giving context for the Lord to encounter you. And so... You know, the Bible says that um, our God is in the heavens and he does all that he pleases. So he doesn't necessarily need context. It means that he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants. But what the Lord wants to do is step into the context that you've given him. He loves to co-labor with us so much. Um, so that's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. Uh, and then, so this is kind of a word for Zion that uh, kind of, came together. So um, we will be known for our world-class business school, and people travel from all over the region, region will come to attend this school, even other nations. Um, I saw this building that was uh, like an exposed brick building, so I don't think it's this building or Pickerington, but I actually think that we need a new building. And then as I woke up, as I woke up in my spirit, I heard along with this that um, we are actually going to lead a group of churches in Kingdom Venture Capital. And not, we will be so successful in leading this venture capital team that even non-Christian businesses will like scramble to get in on the fund with us. So that's what I had. So good. Thanks. So good. Did you have a word of knowledge? What about the word of knowledge? Do you want to do it? Yeah, I'll give it. Okay. One more. Um, so this was in the context of stepping out in faith. And I had heard uh, that there was a man in his late... 40s, I'm picturing, with a nice, lush mustache, and uh, there's a place that you need to go, um, there's a travel situation that you need to go on, I don't know if it's a nation or a city or a region or a state that you're called to, but I saw a mysterious direct deposit in your account of $473.13, yeah, <laughs> and it would be, and it would be as if somebody had walked into your, your bank branch fill out a deposit slip, put your name on it and your account number, handed it to the teller and said, deposit this and walked out the door. Um, so if that's you or you know, even on the live stream or if that happens to you, please share because that would be super encouraging. <laughs> so if you, if you have a lush mustache in your 30s, is that what you said? Uh, late, late 40s. Late 40s. Yeah. You know, you might want to grow one if you don't have one. <laughs> Hey, can we just give it up for Eddie? Because that's super vulnerable, right? All right, I forgot to bring my glasses up here, so I'm just going to stand back here. Um, <laughs> Wesley's on it. He's on it. Thank you, buddy. And the big part, big zipper. <laughs> So, um, so today I would like to help us open up the treasure trove of glory that is lying inside of us. Is that okay? Yeah. Does anybody want that? Yeah. Does Mary Baker speak on this every single time I stand up here? <laughs> Maybe. Somebody has to, right? Um, yeah, so to do that, I just kind of want to take you guys on the journey that I've gone on for the past uh, three, maybe years. Is that okay? A little personal journey here. So um, I've always been attracted to the glory. Anytime we've had like a guest speaker come in, I've just been like, 
just eating up. Like if they're caught talking about glory, there's like some desperation that's always been inside me. Like I just, I need to understand glory. I need more glory. Like I need to move in the glory. I need to partner with the glory. How do I, how do I do this? What is the glory even? Has anybody else felt like that? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, they're, like people would talk about the glory and I would be on the front row weeping and ugly crying. I mean, it's embarrassing. I read books on glory. I prayed about glory. I wrote songs about glory, even though I didn't really know what I was singing. But how many know God just, we're, we are glorious beings. So stuff just comes out of us. God just gives us so much grace. But a few years back, I was reading a book by Ruth Heflin called Glory. <laughs> I have a lot of glory books if anybody needs one to borrow. Um, they're all really good and they're all really different. There's many aspects of glory and today I'm probably not going to hit them all. So this is just my journey, just where I am. And trust me, I don't know but more than just a little tiny scratch of it. So, But I'm hoping that, that this is going to unlock something for you guys because that's what, what happens is our journey unlocks things for other people and sets them free, right? All right, so, um, so in this glory book by Ruth Heflin, she talks about her journey with her friends, how the Lord showed her that praise and worship um, actually brings you into stepping into the glory. And if you're in my worship teams, everybody said amen, because you've already heard me <laughs> just preach to you about this for like a year or two. So, um, yeah, all my worship teams could probably stand up here and give the same exact message. But, um, yeah, so anyway, so praise and worship are key to stepping into the glory realm. And this is kind of what started me more on that journey of, like, entering into the glory kind of in a different way. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But, um, and I just want you to know, too, like, I'm not trying to give you keys today because I, I firmly believe that. Jesus already took the keys, and because Jesus lives in us, we have every key that we need. It's just a matter of learning how to activate it and use them in the right time, right? So when I say praise and worship are key to stepping into the glory, I'm not just talking about this praise and worship service. I'm talking about your praise and your worship, no matter where you are, okay? The revelation from this glory book was put into three simple lines. Praise until the spirit of worship comes, worship until the glory comes, and then stand in the glory where anything is possible. So I'm just briefly going to define praise, worship, and glory, and then I'm going to go on with kind of my journey through this, okay? I keep saying, okay, I guess I, I need you to talk back to me or something. I'm, I don't do this a lot, so, you know. It's so funny, every time I speak and people are always like, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> Like, am I always hard on myself when I'm up here? I don't know. I just say what comes out. It's difficult. Um, yes, I need transformation of the mind. Okay, so briefly, I'm going to uh, just give some bullet points on what praise is, what worship is, and what glory is. Because some people are like, what's the difference between praise and worship? I thought it was all the same thing. Well, it's not. So praise is the what. Everybody say praise is the what. It's what he has done, what he is doing, and what he's going to do. Praise is the entering in, Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. How many times have you heard me say that this year? A lot. The Bible also tells us to praise the Lord with the voice of triumph, voice of psalm, the voice of rejoicing. So praise should be exuberant, right? Um, John heard the voice of great multitudes as the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thunderings. So our praise should sound as loud as Niagara Falls. Has, have you ever been in those services where you're hearing the praises of all the people in the room and it actually sounds like a waterfall? Yeah, it's pretty powerful. This is like, what do you think like heaven's experiencing? Like when our praise is doing that, it's like just filling the throne room. It's just amazing. Praise is songs and words that tell of the mighty works of God's hand. Your praise takes you past where you've been and gives you spiritual movement to ascend higher. And I think you kind of saw that this morning, um, even when Josh was singing out, yours is the kingdom, he's like, man, I just got a picture of the king of glory standing in front of you. And when he's in front of you, guess what? <laughs> There's nothing else there. 
And so, you know, your praise, when you get that revelation of like who God is, he's bigger than what you're going through, it takes you past <laughs> what you're going through and it, it ascends you higher, which is where we need to stay. Action is involved in your praise. It changes the atmosphere. So have joy. Dance like David, maybe. If you're singing about the river, jump in the river. If you're singing about going higher, reach up and ascend to those higher places. When you praise, God gives you faith to receive the promise. Ain't that true? Your praise takes you where no one else's praise can. John heard the voices saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. A voice of praise is always a voice of victory. Yeah. Jesus. Our praise changes the atmosphere, but worship then takes us further in, past the courts of praise into the, into the chambers of God's heart. So we're going to praise until the spirit of worship comes. So sometimes when, you, when we're in a worship service, um, and you can start doing this at home. If we feel like we haven't poured all the praise out yet, we're going to keep praise it, praising it <laughs> until the spirit of worship comes. And I know now you guys are going to recognize it. When you guys come into service, when you're at home praising and worshiping, you'll feel that switch and that, that movement kind of come with the Lord. It's a lot of fun. All right, so worship. Worship is the who. Say that. Worship is the who. That's right. Praise is the what. Worship is the who. He is the Lord, he is the healer, he is our savior, he's everything that we need. Worship is acknowledging God for who he is, it's honoring him. It's bowing down to kiss his hand, kiss his feet in reference. We worship him because he's holy, we worship him because he's worthy. We must be led by the spirit of the Lord to ascend to the mountain though. John 4, 24 says, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. That's the kind of worshipers God's looking for. John the Revelator was in the spirit when he saw visions of God's throne room. How many people have been in the spirit and worship and you started having visions? John also had a great clarity and received revelatory details regarding the lordship of Christ. He heard Jesus' voice and he saw him seated on the throne. When you're in the spirit, you hear and you see in the spirit. Our songs must always move from an earthly perspective to a heavenly one. We don't want to stay down here because we're seated up here, <laughs> right? Worship carries us into God's heart. And it's, you know, actually it's in here, but that's a whole nother conversation. It's the bridge between praise and glory realm because we've got praise, worship, glory. It's the bridge between praise and glory. His response to our praise and worship is his glory. Amen. So let's shift into glory real quick. I'm sorry I'm just flying through this because there's other things I want to get to, but those things are important to know too. Is that helping you guys at all? Yes. Bring some clarity? Okay, good. All right, so when the glory comes, there's a synchronization or a pairing that happens. The holiness comes in, and sometimes all you can do is just stand there in silence and let him happen to you. Did you guys feel that a little bit this morning? When the glory is present, miracles happen without much effort at all. Sometimes signs and wonders happen. Whatever God wants to happen is going to happen. <laughs> when you enter that glory realm, you're moving in the oneness of Christ inside of you, the unity of you and the Spirit. Okay, so I got that out of the way. We're gonna shove that over there. So here's the journey. <clears throat> a couple of years ago, we kept hitting a lid in worship. I know you guys have heard me talk about this sporadically, but never like in a full message. I didn't understand what was happening because we were very open to the spirit. Why do we keep hitting this lid on worship? I realized after reading that book a couple of times that um, we didn't know how to praise. <laughs> this sounds pretty elementary and you're like, what? You guys look like I just slapped you in the face. Um, we were so deep in worship that we skipped the praising part. And so when we started talking about praise and started getting that vision of praise, it was like we just, it was like the hole even got bigger. We we're like, whoa, we really are far away from praise. All the fast songs we were doing talked about us. 
They didn't talk about God much. It was mostly about us. And how many know the more you talk about the Lord, the more he's present? (laughs) But when we start talking about ourselves, it becomes this inward gross thing. You know, of course you're going to hit his ceiling. Sheesh. But, um, you know, I think some of it, though, like this is not to blame anybody. This is like... I feel like sometimes the pendulum just moves depending on our past experiences. And I think this is a year where God is really pulling the pendulum back where it belongs in a lot of areas. But, you know, our past praise experiences, sometimes if you have grown up in the church like I have, man, the praise ended up being something that wasn't wasn't praise. I think everything always starts out with the heart of God and with a right heart, but sometimes it turns into something that's not of God anymore. And so we end up pulling that pendulum all the way to the other side, and now it's completely absent. <laughs> and so I feel like maybe that's what happened with the praise part a little bit. But um, anyway, that, that's kind of a whole nother process just about like learning how to praise. Um, I'll just hit it real quick. So when, when you're praising the Lord, like there is this... Um, there's a, habit, a new habit that has to form if you are not used to praising and thanking God throughout your day as a lifestyle. Like if you just come here on Sunday morning and you think you're just going to praise Jesus like during that first praise song, what? you don't get it. <laughs> we have got to learn how to wake up and thank the Lord for anything. Wake up, God, I thank you that this is a new day of your mercy and your grace. God, I thank you that this is a new day that I'm, I get to lie next to my husband. I thank you for my children. I thank you for having a house. I thank you for a car that runs. Anything you can thank him for throughout the day, this is a new muscle that we're learning how to use. And we think that we're good at it, but we can always get better, right? And so as the worship team has been going through this, you guys have... Probably now, I'm telling you, you're going to see a a difference just because you know the backstory of it. But these guys, I'm so amazed with them. They had moved into it so beautifully because when you're worshiping, when you're leading something from the stage, when you're leading something in your business, when you're leading something in your family, you have to have it as a lifestyle in your own self. You know what I mean? Because it's the overflow of, of who you are. And so we can't just get up here and and fake thankfulness, you know what I mean? And if if you don't know you're thankful about something, how are you supposed to celebrate and praise? That was just a side note. So we started building set lists with praise on them. (laughs) And we started to see the lid come off more and more. And um, I feel like we're still scratching the surface of glory. I think sometimes when we start to enter that glory realm, sometimes we pull back a little bit. That's okay. That is okay because there's still revelation that God's showing us. We move from glory to glory to glory to glory, right? So um, so as, as this whole piece was happening, bringing the praise in, into the worship and the glory. Um, I started seeking God about this word that a speaker had given me that uh, he said that I was going to, God was going to take me into the inner, inner chambers. And I was like, "Eh, is this like some charismatic quadruple anointing kind of word? You know what I mean? Like, is this a real inner, inner chambers? Well, the Lord did end up giving me a verse about it to legitimize it a little bit more. But um, so me being a person that's like, God, I just want all that you have for me. I want to go in the inner, inner chambers. I'm going to go in the inner, inner chambers. (laughs) And um, can I just have another side note with you? A little teachable moment just about giving prophetic words. Okay, thanks. Um, So when I was writing this, I remembered somebody else had given me sort of that word I don't know, not long before that. But this person, the way they gave me this kind of word was, um, and Cheryl was there, so she's probably going to remember this, is that, that Mary, the Lord tells me you have never been into the inner chambers and you've never really been in the glory. And I can't remember like how exactly it was put, but I left there like because I'm like trying to be so open and teachable 
which the Lord showed me a lot in that too, <laughs> I walked out of there totally slimed, you know, because I just took this in, like, I want to be teachable, I want to, you know, but I thought I'd been in his inner chambers, <laughs> and um, so I left feeling really cruddy, you know, from that word, but then the speaker comes and gives me this word that's more of an invitation, God's going to take you into the inner, inner chambers, doesn't that make you want to go and you don't feel slimy? Yeah. So when you give a prophetic word, come on, have the right heart. Because, you know, I feel like when we carry jealousy and envy and things like that, and you try to give that person a word, it's gross and it's not right. Okay. Okay. That was just a little side note. Thank you for that break. So anyway, so I started seeking the Lord about this word about going into the inner inner chambers and I was on this retreat, and I'm like, God, take me to the inner chambers. I don't know what the inner, inner chambers are. Maybe explain to me what the inner chambers are. <laughs> like, is this even a real place? I don't know. God, just take me to the inner chambers. This is three days of me, like, on God about this. On the third or fourth day, finally, I'm sitting in the chair. I'm looking out the window at this beautiful lake. I'm like, God today will you take me into the inner inner chambers and the lord says close your eyes mary so i closed my eyes and i thought i was going to go to heaven i thought i was going to go someplace in the universe <laughs> but i was standing in what i can only explain as the womb of christ and i'm like where am I? <laughs> like, I expected heaven or the universe, but I'm in the womb of Christ. And in that moment, I, I got the revelation of Christ in me, the hope of glory, and my union with Christ. And I just began to weep because I was so overwhelmed by it. And everything, you know, have you ever been in those revelatory moments where everything makes sense all of a sudden? <laughs> And it's like flooding in, and you can't even write it down. You know, we were talking about this earlier. It's like so hard for me to get things out like this because it's so much information. To put it in human words is hard. <laughs> so thank you for your grace. Um, so I'm weeping. I'm overwhelmed. And the Lord says to me, open your eyes now. I open my eyes, and guess what I saw? You'll find out next week. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what I saw was the same thing that I saw before I closed my eyes. It was the lake. It was the snow. It was the landscape. It was everything in the natural realm. Only this time when I was looking at it, Jesus' eyes were looking through my eyes. It was like I had been taken over by an alien. But that's a revelation of oneness in Christ. When he's looking, it was like he was using my eyes as windows. And I knew at that moment he could see and know everything about me. I couldn't hide anything. It, you know that verse, like, search me, oh God? I was like, oh God, <laughs> you're searching me, you know? And I want us to get to the revelation of the oneness of Christ because that is the glory inside of you. First John 4, 17 says, and Christ, as Christ is, so are you in this world. Meaning we are as Christ. I've been thinking about this phrase a lot, is uh, we need to move as Jesus, like as we are him. And I told Jim, I'm like, I don't know if people are ready for me to say that, because it almost sounds like, are you saying I'm Jesus? Kind of. <laughs> He's in you. <laughs> As Christ is, so are you in this world. Yeah. 
Why am I telling you this story? Because it's the most important thing I need to learn about glory. I was seeking glory, but I had limited beliefs on how and what it was and how it would come. I was only expecting those mystical manifestations, you know, like the glory cloud, the gold dust, the oil coming out of people's hairlines and hands and eyeballs and whatever else, the gold teeth. But glory is more than just these few manifestations. When you boil down God's glory to a couple of words, it's his goodness, his splendor. When Moses asked God to show me your glory, it was his goodness that passed in front of Moses that made his face shine. We cannot limit glory to those few manifestations because his goodness encompasses so much more. The cloud, the dust, the other manifestations, they're all good, they're all great. But what the Lord showed me is they're just a type of uh, vehicle to move the glory into our realm. The vehicle carries the glory and it can come in any form God wants it to come in. As a matter of fact, we are vehicles of his glory. Colossians 1.27 says, in the Passion Translation, Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people, and God wants everyone to know it. We have a treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory because Christ lives in us. Christ in you is the hope of glory. His glory is inside you because Christ is one with you. I'm just going to keep saying it in 10 different ways. When you get that revelation, glory is activated. Does anybody want to be activated? And the glory, we have this thing, (laughs) this powerball living inside of us that it just takes one revelation of partnership and probably new habits to form and how we move to actually start walking in it. But when you get that revelation, glory is activated, and when glory is activated, it becomes a place that is moving beyond yourself and your own anointing. God's sovereign hand is moving regardless of you when the glory comes. It's a place where hope is fulfilled. You no longer have to hope because he meets you in that hope moment. (laughs) It's a place of miracles and signs and wonders. Through our anointings, we can move like at a certain length of uh, healing people, saving them, sozoing them, (laughs) you know, saved, healed, delivered. But when the glory comes, it's effortless. Our anointing, we can push through it with our anointing and it's good. And it's not so hard, but when the glory comes, it is effortless. All you have to do is cooperate with him (laughs) and let him happen and be open to it. The more you dive into the chambers of his heart, the more you become in sync with the oneness of Christ and what he is doing and wants to do. You start to understand and operate out of your truest identity how heaven sees you. Do you guys know that heaven sees you a lot more greater than you see you? Do you know heaven has so many plans for us that we're just scratching the surface? But this revelation of oneness with Christ, (laughs) if you're moving as Jesus, can't he do anything? Yes, that's good news. Like I said, you're carrying this powerful bomb of glory and power on the insides that wants to explode all over people and all over the lost. It's time to start moving as Christ because you get how unified you are with him. Christ in you is the hope of glory. The only hope of this world seeing glory is for you and I to manifest.
So the most important thing you can do now is what it always comes down to with me is spending time with Jesus, <laughs> continuing to eat the full loaf of bread, not just a nibble here and there. Immerse yourself, behold him. I don't know how many people, like in the past two weeks, have told me they have been struggling getting time with Jesus, that secret place time with Jesus. Is that you? Are you brave enough to raise your hand? Uh-huh. <laughs> a few of you are. Some of you are like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think the enemy wants to keep you too busy and too distracted to spend time with Jesus? Yes. Do you think that the Lord wants to trust you with more, though? Yes. So we can't leave that foundational um, thing of secret place time. Everything comes out of it. You're the pure and shiny ones. You shine from being in his presence. The more you feast on him, the more you will walk in the fullness of his glory and the more he can trust you with. Remember, it's the glory that changes us. So get in the glory and let him change you. I'd like to read 2 Corinthians 3.18. This is also in the Passion Translation. We can all draw close to him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. We are being transfigured into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So get in the glory. <laughs> We want the day to come where the knowledge of the glory of the Lord covers the earth like the water covers the seas. The harvest depends on it. The harvest is coming, and you are the chest, treasure chest of hope for them to experience his glory, his goodness, and his presence. I'm telling you guys, <laughs> harvest is coming. 2019 is a year to get ready, get systems put in place, whatever it is you need to get ready. 2020, we're going to run. This is your preparation time. We want to be people who carry the glory. So when these lost people come in, guess what? <laughs> we're going to teach them how to carry the glory too. <laughs> and then what? A city might be saved? Come on, we got to think bigger. He's already put the glory inside of you, and you were made for his glory. You were made for signs and wonders and miracles. You were made to reflect his face to the world. You know, before the fall, we were actually made to, to walk and live in his glory all around us. But then all that stuff happens, and now he lives inside of us. His glory is inside of us. Now we just have to activate it. So this morning, I just, I want to do something a little different. I want to make room for an encounter with God because encounters tie into the secret place time. The more, the more we seek encountering God and encounters with God, the more revelation that he's going to give us in order to walk these things out, right? And so um, are you okay if we do some little encounter time? Okay. I've been singing this song that I wrote um, for a couple of weeks, and it's just a personal song that I've been singing to the Lord, but I really felt like I wanted just to sing it over you guys while you um, just came up front or turned in your seat, kind of made your own encounter altar um, with the Lord. So I'm going to move over to the keyboard in a second, but... Um, I want you to ask the Lord, what revelation does he want to lay on you this morning about glory and about oneness with him? I just, I want you just to get a picture of him looking through your eyes right now. That moment that I had, it brings you into the reality that Christ is inside you, watching with you loving with you, walking with you. He's seeing what you're seeing at all times. So let, let that just kind of prepare your heart. 
As you go deep, he goes wide. So this morning, you're going to lay down your pride. You're going to lay down any striving, because we're not striving for the glory. We already have it. You've already got the anointed one's attention. He's watching everything through your eyes right now. So I'm going to move over to the keyboard, and I want you guys to find a place to encounter the Lord. This whole big area is a great space for you, or you can turn around in your chair. But what I don't want you to do is disengage and think, this isn't for you. You already know it. I already know the glory. I already know the oneness of God. There's always more. We go from glory to glory to glory. So let him take you to another glory, okay? So come on down. Close your eyes as if you were the only one in the room with him. Let him lead you into your mind, in your mind's eye to a place of encountering him and bringing you into a greater revelation of oneness. Allow God to shine his light inside your heart. Ask him to take away anything that's holding you back, any veils we may have put there, things you don't even know are there. Get a picture in your mind of the Lord and just behold him. And when you're ready, ask him what he wants to tell you, where he wants to take you. Maybe he'll show you his inner, inner chambers. And after all this, I want you to write it all down. Your love conquers. 
Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Stay soaking. Ignore my voice if that's you. And what we'll do is I'm going to invite our ministry teams to come forward. And you guys are going to come on the stage this morning just to keep the river open for those that want to continue to soak as Mary plays for a few more moments. And so if I could have the ministry team, you guys can come forward. If you're here this morning and you want to get right with God, and man, that's something that you want to make a choice on that today, come forward and let our teams pray for you. And so we bless you. Pastor Jim is going to be back next week. Continue to soak, and our ministry teams will be up here with name badges on and let them uh, pray for if you want a word or if you need any healing in your body. Bless you guys.